Something that comes up for my clients a lot that we end up unpacking is how much of themselves is living in pieces. And they find that they are lacking wholeness in their lives. And they usually notice this because they're exhausted. Life feels so energetically and emotionally exhausting for them. And so as we unpack this, we find that they're really tired of showing up in multiple places, not as themselves, but as others want them to be. I believe this is something that a lot of us struggle with because you know, society has certain standards. Often we try to live up to those standards at the expense of our own emotional and mental well-being. Living in pieces means that you are one way in this part of your life and another way in another area of your life. Essentially, there are several parts of you living different lives every moment, every day, every second for various reasons. Some folks might call this code switching. Depending on what's going on in your environment, you might find yourself having to switch the way that you speak. You might find yourself switching your body language. You might even find yourself switching the way that you dress or even do your hair. There are several reasons why we do this, and I'm gonna share what those are in a few minutes, but really this is what prevents us from achieving wholeness. This is one of the elements. Welcome to the Monday message. My name is Francis. This is just bite-sized nuggets to encourage you to think a little bit deeper and hopefully inspire you to take action and make some positive changes in your life. If we don't know already, living in pieces is very unsustainable. If you're living like this, no wonder you're exhausted, confused, or lack clarity. And I've been there. I spent a number of years not really being myself, living out of my authenticity. And not being myself was, for me, a form of protective barrier. When I subscribed to racial narratives, I exhausted myself in that area. When I subscribed to the superwoman complex, I exhausted myself in that area. So I got tired, y'all. <laughs> I got tired and had to really reevaluate like what was really happening behind all of these protective layers. And I'm finding that when people are living in pieces, it's really based on certain belief systems and trauma. And that had me believing that I couldn't show up fully with all of my parts. I'll give you a brief example as a melanated individual. I at least thought or had this belief system that I had to curtail my language and how I express myself, either to protect myself or because I just had this belief system that people just wouldn't understand. Growing up in a very frightening environment had me shut down parts of myself for legit safety. So let's go back to why you might be doing this. A few reasons why people might do this is what I mentioned earlier. It's a protective barrier. You know, you're protecting yourself against what you perceive as unsafe, or you feel threatened, or you're protecting yourself from vulnerability, from getting hurt, or you're protecting yourself because there might be some self-esteem things happening, such as low self-worth. So you might want to project to others a very different image of who you truly are deep down. You cannot achieve wholeness by living your life this way. So we must interrupt this pattern. Achieving wholeness is so important because it's through wholeness that you bring more peace, alignment, balance, and joy into your life. Because I believe that we are an extension of source. When we come into this world, we are already whole. But, you know, but life kind of, you know, cuts us up into little pieces. And so we have to find our way home. We have to find our way back to ourselves. When we think about living in pieces, it goes much deeper than that. And if you watch my videos or if you follow me on Instagram, I'm always going to say go deeper. You often don't even realize that you're living in pieces like this. And even when you do realize it, you almost feel justified for doing this and for being this way because what it does, it supports a wounded narrative. And we don't want that, y'all. We don't want to support any wounded narratives. So the goal is how do we bring all the parts and pieces together to achieve wholeness. And there's really a lot that you can do to really bring all the parts of yourself to the surface so that you can actually heal them so you can move forward. I usually tell my clients to bring all of their parts to a round table, legit. Like I want you to put them on a round table and just have a conversation with each one of them and say, what is it that you need? What are you looking for? What's going on over here? And that process is called shadow work. If you're not familiar with shadow work, this is a very crucial part of healing any sort of trauma that you might be experiencing. And just stay towards the end because I'm going to give you a book that has been really helpful on my journey as I did some shadow work for myself. And let me know what you think. Shadow work is really about bringing everything to the surface 
that you may not like about yourself so that you can heal them. I really want you to pay attention to this question. Ask yourself, what happens when you don't like something about yourself? What do you say? What do you do? And that's going to be a tall tale sign as to whether you are living in pieces. Usually when we don't like something about ourselves, we will most likely repress them or hide them from other people, even hide them from ourselves on a very unconscious level. So this is where shadow work comes into play. Shadow work is essentially working with your unconscious mind to uncover the parts of yourself that you repress and hide. Like write this down somewhere. I really want you to remember that you can only achieve wholeness when your unconscious self and your conscious self become one. Most of you have not even come close to tapping into what's deeply hidden in your psyches. First of all, it's not entirely your fault. We're not programmed to do this because if we go deep into our psyches and see the unconscious thoughts and feelings that are holding us back, it would be a very completely different world. And quite frankly, it's kind of scary to like go down into the basement, so to speak, right? To, to see all of the things that we've been dreading to see, to know, and to feel. By you living in pieces, there is something underlying that is causing certain behaviors, certain patterns, and feelings because it's being led by something deep in your unconscious. For instance, hidden beliefs and unprocessed trauma are usually lurking behind the shadows. And I truly believe that is what is separating you from the deep healing that needs to take place. Again, traveling that deep can feel extremely intimidating and quite scary. And the reason why it's so scary is because they're so incredibly intense. and We haven't really learned the skill set of emotional mastery. We don't know how to manage really intense feelings. And we also might be concerned that if we revisit something, all we're doing is re-experiencing it. And the reason that it's also not your fault entirely. We're programmed not to feel. There are so many distractions in the world that make it very convenient and easy for you to continue to live in pieces. And that's preventing you from achieving wholeness. Healing these things in your life requires depth. Although a lot of it might not be entirely your fault, it is still your responsibility to make that change. No one else can do it for you. And so if something remains unchanged in your life and you find yourself stuck and looping, and because you're basically repeating the same story with different characters, it's just the same plot, then this is your opportunity. I always say like all the quote unquote bad stuff that happened in our lives, the emotional turmoil, all those emotions that just don't feel good, it's just feedback. It creates a really a roadmap for us. And so I really do get excited when my clients are like, this is how I feel. This is how I've been feeling. Because when you follow that feeling, it will take you to liberation. When you ignore and when you repress, suppress, or use all these defense mechanisms, then it's going to be really hard to heal something that you either are afraid or don't want to feel. Wholeness can only happen, I'm going to say it again, when your conscious self and your unconscious self become one. So I'm going to leave you with another question. So write this down. I love self-reflection questions. What is one thing that you are afraid of someone knowing about you or finding out about you. Start there. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to leave a very powerful book. This is a book I recommend all the time to my clients. A friend actually shared it with me and it's been a game changer for me. If you're interested in doing some shadow work, this is the book to do that with. It's called The Dark Side of the Light Chasers by Debbie Ford. I've left the link in the description below. But take your time with it because... Uh, it's, it's a bit of intense, especially if you're new to doing this kind of work. So just take your time with it. And I'm going to just encourage you to do it with love, with grace, lots of self-forgiveness and lots of self-compassion. And that's all I got for the Monday message today. I hope it was helpful. I hope it gave you some new insights, something to think about, something to kind of like dive deep into. As you know, I really appreciate it if you like, subscribe, or just leave a comment below and let me know how helpful that was for you. Or, or if you have done shadow work, I'd love to know who's done it and who's new to shadow work. Of course, share this with somebody you know that could use it, even if they're like, I'm ready to hear all that. Again, just drop the link. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the other side of change.